I'd like to begin by just uh, saying how excited I am to announce officially our uh, new coaches that, that uh, finalize our staff. And uh, as I said previously, we would uh, wait through the bowl game and, and then make some decisions after that to be able to, to finalize what we wanted to do offensively. And uh, couldn't be more pleased and more excited to, uh, to have these three gentlemen here with us as a part of our staff. And, and it begins with, with Mike DeBoard, our new offensive coordinator and associate head coach. And, and I've known Mike for many, many years and, and have so much respect for him as a person, first and foremost, and the way that he has conducted himself in our profession and uh, the high level that he's achieved on the field. It, it, um, and, and we was at Michigan as OC and, and the NFL, and then most recently at Tennessee as offensive coordinator, and, and just really thrilled to have him here with us running our offense. And, and one thing I will say, uh, philosophically, you know, we, um, as we move forward, my goal is to, I want to uh, run the defense and be able to manage the team. And that's my philosophy going forward. And, and on game day, I want to call the defense and manage the game. In order to do that, I have to hire, had to hire an offensive coordinator that I uh, totally trusted to allow him to be the head coach of the offense. And so that's what we're going to do with, with Coach DeBoard. And, and uh, also next to him, you have Grant Herb, who will be our passing game coordinator. And I've worked with Grant uh, at three different places. It started all the way back to Lambeth University in Jackson, Tennessee. And uh, met him there, worked with him there side by side, and have just really grown to respect him as a person. And uh, he's a high character guy that uh, has a great family as well, as all three of these gentlemen do. And uh, we're aligned philosophically in how you motivate and uh, the care for their players and, and the way they're going to coach them is uh, at a high, high level. And uh, he's at Ole Miss, has uh, really assembled a tremendous group of receivers there year after year that uh, their numbers speak for themselves. His recruiting was off the charts. And, and he's going to bring that uh, to us here at Indiana. And very, very excited about having Grant Hurd join us. And then, and then Sean Watson uh, is a guy that I met this year and had heard of, about him over time and knew the job that he did at previous places on the field, but uh, didn't know the man of Sean, but uh, got the chance to really um, get to know him a lot this year and uh, such a great person, um, cares about the people he's with, um, just such a tremendous uh, mentor and he's going to be able to be a great mentor for our players. And, and that's something that really is important to me as the head coach is that we um, have men that really care uh, more about the player as a person than as the guy that performs on Saturdays. And so that's where it all begins for me. And Sean's a guy that's going to bring that to our quarterback room. And uh, we call him the, the quarterback professor on our staff. And he uh, just does such a great job dissecting that position and, and teaching uh, those guys to be able to make their reads and and do the little things it's going to take to be successful. I, I, I view that position as the number one position, the most important position on the field. And so really, really excited to have Sean join us. And we appreciate his faith and, and confidence in, in, in me, as, as well as all three of these guys, to be able to leave um, the, you know, with uh, Grant and Mike to leave great situations to come and uh, be alongside the Indiana Hoosiers as we build this program and move forward. So very, very excited to have them here with us and then really, really uh, fired up about the future of Indiana University football. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, this opportunity. And, and I uh, want to a little, really talk about you know, why I'm here. And uh, I always look at things in factors. And my wife and I sat down and we looked at this. And, and uh, we were obviously going to be closer to our family, which was very important to us. Uh, her family is here in the state of Indiana. My sister is as well. And then our, our kids and grandkids are not that far away. And so that was one thing that was a, a factor for us. But that wasn't going to be a deciding factor at all. And that uh, had a, a small portion of this. Because what, to me, was going to be important was the head coach. And uh, I've worked for a lot of head coaches. I've worked for Hall of Fame coaches. And, uh, you know, I wanted to work for Tom Allen. When I saw that he got this job, I didn't know if I'd have an opportunity like this. But I knew if he asked me, I was going to be there. And uh, I've known his family since 1979. I uh, went and studied football through his dad. And at that time, I walked away. I said, there's a man that's not only a great football coach, but a great man, a man of integrity, faith, a uh, family man. And and uh, then I got to know Tom when he was an assistant at Ben Davis. And we continued that relationship uh, as we have, you know, leading up to this. And so that was the, 
And the other part of that factor with Tom was who was, who was going to be on the offensive staff. That was going to be important to me. I had known Sean for a long time. I've had nothing but the greatest respect for him. We studied in the offseason in Tennessee the Ole Miss passing game, and I was very impressed with their receivers. I did not know Grant, but uh, I knew his body of work, and I really uh, enjoyed that and knew that that was a great football coach. And now I'm, I found out he's also obviously a great man. And uh, Greg Fry and, and Dillon and all the guys on offense, uh, I'm just – excited about what they do on the field, but more so what kind of men they are. And that was going to be an important factor. And then the last factor for me was going to be like Indiana University. My brother played here under Coach Corso. I've been a fan of Indiana University, but I wanted to know that there was a commitment to winning football. And I, I cannot believe the commitment that Fred Glass and the university, the athletic department has made towards football here. And that's I really feel like Indiana football is going to explode, and I wanted to be a part of that explosion and uh, breaking through, as we call it. And so those were the three factors, and, uh, you know, I, I, can't, I can't be more excited right now. I'm just – I mean, I sprint to the office right now, and I'm, I'm, I've got great excitement. So uh, I just appreciate Tom wanting me to be here. Yeah, I, I, I can't tell you how extremely excited I am to uh... – be at Indiana, uh, you know, when, when Tom got the job and, and he called and asked if I'd be, be a part of it, um, it, it was a no-brainer for me and my family to uh, be able to be back with him because uh, he, he has taught me so much more than just football. Uh, he, he, really was my, he really is my go-to guy when I have questions about life. Uh, his, his wife and my wife are really close. Um, and... Um, to get to come up here and help build this offense and, and learn from Coach Watson and uh, Coach DeBoard and two, two great minds in this game uh, to help me with, with my career and where I want to go. Um, to be able to be around these guys and, and to soak up their knowledge is, was a no-brainer for me to come and, and be a part of this thing. And, and uh, I, I can't tell you how excited I am. Uh, this, if we can just get rid of this snow a little bit, it'll be a lot better. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> but you, this is going to be exciting. You know, uh, the challenges, the, the uh, just coming into something new, the, the offense that this, these guys have had here, um, it's not like I'm coming to something empty. There's some players here, and uh, I'm just looking forward to developing them uh, as, as men first and then as players. And uh, – Try to make this the best offense we can in the Big Ten and in the country. Well, I'm excited to have the opportunity to stay. Um, you know, it's um, from the very beginning when I first met Tom, we had a heart that was uh, a lot alike for what we our job was uh, as coaches, and that's to develop men. And you know, the advantage we get from coaching is that we get to be a part of a game that we love. And he just his heart was like my heart, so. I've uh, enjoyed every moment I've been around him. Uh, he's become a, a very dear friend, and I'm excited about you know the direction that he set for our kids. Uh, I listened to him, talked to him uh, during the bowl game, and I know that uh, you know that he's he's hitting the right the right things with them because uh, we have a, a unique group of kids, and they're uh, you know they're a talented group also, and uh, we just have to keep developing them. Uh, I think uh, I had no idea, that really, honestly, I just, you know, trusted Tom. I knew it was, uh, you know, that he was going to put together a really good staff because I know the man he is. And I had no idea that he was going to hire Mike. And Mike and I have talked about working with each other for a number of years now. I mean, we've known each other since 1987. And, um, you know, we've talked about being, you know, working beside each other for a long time. So when he told me that, and he didn't know that either. <laughs> so. It was kind of cool because I knew it was uh, it was it was meant to be, and uh, I've got to know Grant here over the last couple of days, and he's going to fit in really well. He's a pretty mm -hmm. cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some swag, <laughs> so I'm excited to be here. It's an honor to be here. I think there's great things happening with this program. No, these will be the. Uh, the nine full-time guys that we have um, retained or selected will be the nine that we'll carry forward uh, into spring and into the, the fall of 2017. 
Uh, we'll have some few off the field positions that uh, you traditionally have, you know, to fill. But uh, these is going to be our full staff, full time guys. Well, that was something that Tom and I talked about in our talks, you know, before uh, coming here. And, uh, you know, we both had the same ideas of the offense, exactly what we wanted to be. And we will be a tempo offense. And uh, also, too, uh, we both know that you have to be able to run the football. And uh, we're going to run the football. And with that said, you also have to have an explosive passing game and run game, but you've got to be able to throw the ball down the field vertically to, to have explosive plays. So we'll, we'll have that ability as well. But the biggest thing is in offensive football, in my opinion, is not turning the ball over. You cannot have fumbles. You can't have interceptions. And uh, we've got to protect our defense and our football team that way. Well, I, I do believe that there's more wide open offenses. Uh, you look at Ohio State's offense and, and others, they're, I think it's more wide open that way. You see more spread involved now with tempos. And so that way it's changed. But the Big Ten is the Big Ten. It's tough football. And you've got to be able to play physical football. And you've got to be able, it goes back to running the football because uh, when the months, then when it gets into November, when you're playing for the championship, that's when you got to be able to line up and run it at that time. And so uh, that, I, that will never change. It's a tough physical league. Your uh, thoughts are the uh, final competitors in the Big Ten Big Ten Where do you guys specialize geographically in recruiting and other sports that have philosophies and different things like that? Go ahead, Grant. Well, uh, geographically, I, I've been all in the South. Um, Texas, uh, Louisiana. Georgia, just wherever in the South, because uh, that's all I've, where the only place I've ever lived. Uh, so that's where I think my strengths are. But put me anywhere, and I'll I'll try to go find them. Oh, for my position or just? just? I guess for your position or just in general. Uh, for my position, you know, I want guys that can <laughs> score touchdowns. I need difference makers. Uh, and guys that have an attitude that when they step off that bus, they have the best thing out there and no one can stop them. And it's a mindset, uh, and that's what I'm looking for. And, uh, you know, that, that comes in all different sizes and, and shapes and, and everything else in between. But um, that, that, that's got, it's, I need guys that are, have a mindset of just I am the best thing out there and I can't be stopped. You want me to go next? Sure. Okay. Uh, I've had experience just about uh, everywhere, really. Uh, been in, uh, you know, the uh, Texas primarily has been over the 35 years I've done. I've been there 26 years. I've been in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I've been down in the Austin area. I've been in the Houston area. Probably have more experience uh, in the Dallas Houston area because of the places I've been at. Um, I've been in the Cincinnati Dayton area in Ohio. Um, I've been in St. Louis and uh, Kansas City. I've also been in Chicago because, you know, the different places I've been in the Big Ten. So, and I've always chased national quarterbacks wherever they've been, you know, since I've been coaching the position. So, you know, kind of like uh, what Grant was saying, you know, quarterback-wise, you know, you were looking for a guy who has ability as a passer that can get himself out of trouble and, and um, has the ability to run the football. You know, a, a guy that I think probably more, the, you know, the skill set's always the attraction that takes you there. I think the real thing that you're always trying to find out is the pedigree and the makeup and the character of a, a young man because that really helps them realize their talent. You know, the skill set you see on film, if the character's there, you know, they'll develop into, you know, part of the team kind of guy, which a quarterback has to be. Recruiting wise, I've really recruited just about everywhere. Uh, when I was at Michigan, we were we recruited nationally, and so you were you had your areas, but yet you also you went all over the country looking for your position as well. And so 
you got experience that way. I, uh, when you're looking at players, I think the first thing that I look at, and we will, I know Tom believes in this, just in three short days with him, but his character. Uh, this will be a character program, and you have to have character players. I really believe those are the guys that win for you. And, uh, and also, two guys that are going to achieve academically. Um, so that, those are the first two areas that I've always looked at as a recruiter, and I know that will be the, the same here as well. And then you look at their football talents, what they can do that way. Well, we, you know, I've got to do a good job, and we've got to, you know, do a good job building our offense around them because that's where we'll begin. I'll always be around the quarterback. It, it's, um, you know, I think Richard is a, a blank slate in a lot of regards. Uh, I'm very familiar with where he came from, uh, from Plano High School, and I'm familiar with his junior college. Um, you know, and having been around him this year, I've got a real, I think, a good feel for him and what he needs to develop and. You know, he needs to continue to, you know, learn how to manage a game. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things to manage in a game. It's, um, you know, decision making. Uh, it's uh, learning how to s handle situational football. Uh, I think that both uh, Peyton and Austin, because of where they're at in their careers, will have the same, you know, the same learning curve to go through. Because all quarterbacks, I think the big transition between high school in college is situational management, decision making, and that. So um, it'll they'll all be able to go through that at the same time. Really, uh, I like. Uh, I think Richard's got. Uh, he's got really. He's got arm talent that could take him to the next level. He's got to detail his game. Um, I think um, you know Austin. Uh, you know he's a passer. He's a guy that can. Uh, you know can. You know that. I think can really make the room better by just simply understanding where he's at. He's getting ready to go into his third year, and he needs to make the room competitive now. Um, and I think Peyton Ramsey, I really like him. Um, I'm really, I've known him since he was, you know, really a kid because I've recruited his dad's high school for a number of years. And you know, he is, uh, he's a very competitive, he's smart, tough, and dependable. He's a coach's kid. He gets it, and he's going to up the ante in the room because he's going to, he's going to study the game, and you know. He's going to do what you know, coach asked him to do and do it at a high level. So I'm excited about those guys. I think uh, really, I think Peyton's got a you know Peyton's got a future ahead of him as well as uh, Austin, um, and you know they're going to push Richard, which is what you need. That room has to be the most competitive room on the team. If that room's right, the team will be right. So that's what you know I've got to do with them. Are there any kind of differences in what you'll need out of that position you know, going forward kind of as compared to what you were kind of working with last year? And yeah. how big of an advantage for you is it that you have a relationship with those guys already established at third uh, First, it's an it's a, it's a advantage that I have a relationship with them because I know them, they know me. Um, you know, what we need to do and what we're get, you know, we're, we've already started talking you know, how we'll develop this offense around them and their skill sets. Um, I think, um, you know, in each one of their cases, like I was referring to earlier, if they just simply need to continue to learn the game <clears throat> at this level, and part of that is what we do and how we build that offense around them. And then, you know, learning how to, you know, uh, be efficient on the field. And that's what I mean by management. You know, in situations, because that guy handles the ball in every snap and is in, you know, he's involved in a decision on every snap. So be, becoming, you know, getting the offense in their blood and then, uh, you know, becoming, you know, situational managers, knowing when to and when not to and how to and how not to are all the things that you have to develop. And that takes time and reps. It takes time and reps. And I know that, you know, we'll build everything the way we practice, the way we install, those things will be around, you know, developing that quarterback. The, this, this program struggled in the red zone all season offensively. Is there anything philosophically that you bring to the field to, to try to make it so that that's not an issue going forward? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And uh, we had the same problem my first year at uh, Tennessee. Uh, we were, I would say, average in the red zone. And uh, 
So what I decided to do was to go back and study teams, what they were doing, as well as uh, looking at play calling that way. And uh, we were either first or second in the red zone this past year in the SEC because uh, you've got to be able to put the ball in the end zone throw-wise. And, uh, you know, everybody wants the, the defenses, they get tighter. You get down there, the closer you get to the goal line, the defenses tighten up. So we actually uh, threw the ball a little bit more down there, and that's why we were so successful in the red zone. So that's what we'll, you know, be looking to do. You know, I think that uh, as is the case in, in most staffs, you know, you have the, the offensive coordinator and coach the board that's going to be the visionary for the, the, um, the system that they develop. But I've hired a group of guys and that are going to add to it, the couple that are already here in, in uh, Dylan and Greg that uh, are team guys, you know, and so they're all going to be working side by side. And, and so what I see Grant's role in that is they put this offense together is to be able to help us in the passing game to be able to maximize, you know, defend, you know, be able to go through and study the opponents, you know, coverages and the way that they decide to play us and whether it's, it's you know, the man and zone and, and press and off and the different things they try to do disguise wise. And, and so that's going to be his big responsibility is to help us be successful to throw the football. And, and uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to run the football extremely well and that's going to be our number one priority. Um, but uh, as Coach DeBoer said, we got we got to be able to make those explosive plays down the field with our receivers. And uh, you know, to me, it's about scoring touchdowns. You know, I've said it from the beginning. You know, yards can be what they are. You know, I really don't care what we're ranked in yards. It's about points. It's the same way on defense. You know, you got to keep them out of the end zone, and you got to put it in the end zone um, on offense. And so, to me, that's what we're going to try to do. And so, the guy that's going to coordinate that passing game with the whole group together will be Coach Hurd, and, and uh, I know him extremely well, and uh, I know he likes to throw the football and uh, likes those receivers catching that ball, and uh, that's something we've done really, really well here for a long time, and that's not going to change. The difference is we've got to be great in the red zone. We've got to score points. Steve Jackson, Rivals.com. Coach Hurd, what were the traits or characteristics that made your receivers at Old Miss so successful, and in what ways do you see IU's current receivers or returning to, to receivers, excuse me, uh, displaying those? Well, the guys at Ole Miss, they, they knew my depth chart was etched in sand. Like, so they knew every day they had to go out and compete and earn it. Uh, and uh, what, I, what my mindset was going into Ole Miss is I wanted a room where no one's job was safe. You had to go earn it, and iron sharpens iron. So they knew they were competing against themselves every single day. And uh, my vision for this room is to, to come in and make it competi as competitive as possible. I don't want anybody to ever feel comfortable that this is my spot. There's no one there to push me. I, I want some, them to know that this guy's behind me and he can take my spot. And, um, and I got to go out there and earn it and practice. I want practice to be the hardest thing they do all week. So when Saturdays come, it's, it's easy and it's fun. Um, the talent we have here, I know there's talent here. I, I don't know who's where and who's what. And, and all that stuff will shake out in the spring, but they have to go earn it. I, I, the past is the past. This is we're going forward, and and uh, you know they they've got to show me what they can do and, and earn it. And if you work hard, they'll, they'll, the the cream will rise to the top. Well, I, I've always believed this. I don't know that you know it until you're on the field with it, like really what Grant's talking about. But uh, we were we prepared last year uh, for Northwestern in our bowl game, and then this year we prepared for Nebraska. And uh, in our cut-ups, we put Indiana in our cut-ups. And uh, I really, when I watched it, I really thought that they did a nice job of coaching and I also thought there was talent there. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll find out all their strengths, what they have, and how we can apply it to the system uh, and adjust the system to them. And, uh, but I, I do know that there's talent on this football team. And uh, it goes back to we've got to just – we've got to score points, score more points, and then we've got to protect the football. And those are going to be the two things we really concentrate on. Coach 
Sure. Uh, I've already talked to some of them on the phone. Uh, again, it's only been three days, so it's gone fast. And uh, But yet I have talked to some of them on the phone. And uh, then we'll have a team meeting on Sunday, and Tom's going to introduce us to them. But uh, it's all about building relationships. I, I don't care what play you draw up there. That play is not worth anything unless those players believe in you and you believe in them, and then uh, they believe in that play, and that's last. But uh, we've, I, I know that being new, uh, it's all going to be about getting to know them and them getting to know me, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun because uh, – I love coaching, I love leading, and uh, I know these guys are ready to go because the ones I've talked to, they're really excited. So I'm looking forward to that. For all of you, less than a month from now, it'll be signing day. Uh, it's a huge time of year for recruiting, uh, and you guys have to, have to adjust now. I mean, how has that been so far for you? Everybody's looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, you know, we've, uh, you know, we've spent quite a bit of time, you know, since we've all been together talking about recruiting, and you know, formulating a plan to finish up on the guys who are remaining and looking at, you know, possibilities of some new people that we haven't looked at before, and we've done it together as a whole staff. So it's been, it's been a good thing because when everybody's on the same page, you know, I'm, we're going to team recruit and help each other out and make sure that we target the right guys, and uh, you can do that by formulating opinions from everybody and, and getting everybody involved in closing those guys out. I will add to that that I thought, again, we've only been together for three days, but what Tom's been doing in our staff meetings by watching a lot of recruits as a staff and then you know, questioning, like Sean, what he wants in a quarterback, and then you know, going through the receivers, what we want there, and tight ends for me. And so I just thought that was really a great way to see the recruits that we're going after, guys we have committed, and then, uh, you know, what we're looking for in those positions. And so uh, it's really coming together fast, which I know we all appreciate. Have you been able to at least talk to them on the phone yet, that kind of thing? Yeah, I'm not allowed to talk about them, whatever, but I, and, but I understand the question, and uh, yes, I have. Um, and, you know, it goes back to with our own players, but you have to build relationships, and uh, that's what we're, you know, beginning to do right now. we got time for two more, Zach. Yep. Eric. Tom, I just wanted to ask, I guess, irrespective of a lot of what we talked about today, but will there be, will, will you kind of stay as defensive coordinator in the title as mm -hmm. well as head coach, or will somebody else kind of move up to that maybe for organizational <laughs> Yes, what I, what I plan to do is uh, I'm going to stay as defensive coordinator. And my, my philosophy is going to be that I'm going to be, um, I'm going to run the defense and manage the team, you know, during, this, during the offseason as we run as a program. And then on game day, I want to call the defense and manage the game. And so that's my goal. And I have great assistance on defense. Those guys are going to stay here with us. And uh, now their responsibilities I see is increasing. And uh, just like they did during the bowl game. And I felt like that uh, there were times when I had to go and do some head coach things and meetings. And uh, we, we are so, especially spending that whole year together, we kind of work as a unit now. And, and guys were able to elevate their roles and responsibilities per the defensive side of the ball. And, and Coach Hagan will elevate in his responsibilities. And, and Coach Joseph did a great job in, in the secondary of kind of elevating his. And, and so I'm going to lean on those guys to do that. But I just think it's really important that that uh, you know, I continue to mold this defense into what I want it to become. We're not there yet. We made tremendous strides uh, in a year, uh, but we need to get a lot better. And uh, we, we're striving to be a top 25 defense in all major categories, and uh, we're going to continue to strive for that. So I just think that I want to uh, coach to my strengths, and that's why I felt so critical that I hired Coach DeBoer to be the head coach of the offense so I can turn that over to him. I completely trust him. And allow him. I'm not going to tell him what plays to call. You know, I'm going to really um, allow him to be. I able might to need do a little it. help every now and then, <laughs> so that's all right. So, John, you talked about special teams in the past year. They've kind of divvied the title up. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have one? I know everybody kind of does it as a group effort, but are you going to have one voice as far as a special teams coordinator going forward? Yes, we will have that. Uh, I, I believe in that. I believe you have to have one person that owns it. Um, I've been in that role in my past, various places, and, and I know the, the value that that creates because I want somebody's name to be on it. And they take it personal, 
and they make sure everything is, is right. And not that the other guys didn't, but it, it to me it matters when one guy, yeah, one guy, one voice, one direction, um, and he'll be able to uh, orchestrate that. And it's it's uh, of all the units on the team, it's both as players and as coaches, it involves everybody. And uh, you got to have receivers, running backs, you know. Really, I guess maybe quarterback would be the only position you don't use those guys much of. But every other position, and on defense, it's all of them that are going to be involved in special teams. So our coaches will still be involved for sure, but we'll have one guy that will be denoted as, as a special teams coordinator. Yes. We'll announce it later. Yes.